There are lots of ways to present or visualize the frequency content of a signal and different industries have adopted different standards over the years. For example, some industries will always show the power spectrum plotted in decibels against a linear frequency axis whereas other f industries will use a log scale frequency axis. So what I'm going to do in this video is just run through some of the common ways of presenting the frequency content of a signal. And I'm going to do that in MATLAB and I will make the MATLAB code available up on my WordPress site and I'll include a link to that code in the description or about section of the YouTube page. Um, I'll also put a link into uh, the code which I'm just going to get onto in a few s moments. Um, but before doing that I just want to run through the plots that I'm going to generate. And I want you to be aware that each of these plots that you're seeing are all generated from the same time domain data. And all I'm really doing is changing the frequency axis in which the data is presented. So for example this plot up in the top left is just showing the frequency plotted in radians per sample rather than hertz. This plot here shows the frequency axis in hertz, but as well as showing the positive frequencies, we're also showing the negative frequencies associated with that signal. Um, there are four other plots I'd like to quickly run through then. Um, a very common way of visualizing this frequency spectrum in MATLAB is uh, as a double-sided magnitude spectrum in which the bin frequencies are shown. And it's important to note that when you're dealing with real signals, the uh, positive frequencies are always a, a mirror image of the negative frequencies. And here I have the single-sided magnitude spectrum, again shown in bins. And these last two plots just change the frequency axis. And this axis here is in frequency in hertz, while this one on the bottom right shows the frequency in normalized frequency, where the frequencies are all normalized to the Nyquist frequency. So this position here where my mouse is located has a value of 1, and that corresponds to uh, the Nyquist frequency, which is half the sampling frequency. So let me just move into the code now. So here's a link to the code and I've also included a link to the time domain data that I'm using in this demonstration. Um, this data is taken from a patient who has a neuro neurological tremor. Um, now you can use whatever data that you have available, you don't have to use this particular data, but um, do set up these variables. Set up the capital N to be equal to the length of the signal, which is uh, the number of samples in the signal. Fs is the sampling frequency and F Nyquist is half the sampling frequency, which is the Nyquist frequency. So let me just evaluate that to load in the data and set up those variables. And I'm just going to move into the command line now where I just want to show you how to quickly um, set up or view the frequency content of a signal. And you can do that by using the plot ABS FFT of signal. So what this is doing is getting the ABS, which is the magnitude values, of the FFT of the signal. Now the FFT is a built-in function in MATLAB which determines the magnitude and phases of the sinusoids present in a signal. I'll give you a link to uh, a more in-depth discussion on that but to use it just hit return like that and we get our magnitude spectrum. And um, I'm just going to go back into the script to show you or to label the um, access properly. Okay, so maybe I'll just evaluate all of this. And moving back to the figure, we can see that I've labeled this uh, frequency axis as being frequency of bins and almost. And the reason why I say it's almost the uh, frequency in bins is because the frequency axis here is actually out by a value of 1. And by that I mean um, say if this peak here, which is shown as being a bin value of 35. Well, that um, is actually bin number 34 and the reason why it's showing up like that is because by default what MATLAB does is along this axis it shows the index into the array of data that you just just plotted and the way MATLAB indexes arrays <coughs> is it starts off <coughs> excuse me uh, with a value of 1 whereas the bin number should really be bin number 0. So this first value is showing up as bin number 1. So you're always out by 1. But this command plot ABS FFT of signal is very commonly used in MATLAB. So it's important that you're aware of it and just to be aware of this issue that you're uh, 
your frequency axis is out by one. <coughs> now, th there is a, a quick fix for this problem, and um, let me just show you how to do that now. So maybe I'll just show you this, the fix in action first. Um, basically, what I'm doing down here is I'm creating a new variable called fax bins. Now, fax is just a shorthand way of of, of representing a frequency axis. And this frequency axis uh, specifies the range of bin numbers and uh, basically it starts off at zero and goes up to n minus one where n is the length of the, the signal that we're analysing. And then what I'm doing is I'm plotting this new frequency axis against the absolute FFT of the signal. Maybe I'll just evaluate that piece of code and sh show you what happens. And then when I open up my figure um, what you can see is when I zoom in on the peak now that this peak is now labelled correctly as being number 34 and if I zoom in at the start of my magnitude spectrum we can see that the first bin is correctly labelled as 0. To understand the rest of the script you really need to understand these two lines of code and to understand those fully I'm going to introduce a new variable y which is made up of these sequence of numbers 2, 3, minus 4, 3 and 4. Now the numbers don't matter um, but when I plot y all I'm doing is plotting those sequence of numbers uh, to the figure and there we go so there's my 2, 3, minus 4 3 comma 4. So we have these d different data points, uh, five of them in total, and they're each connected by a straight line. Now each of those data points can be thought of as uh, coordinate. The first data point is located at 1 comma 2, the next data point located at 2 comma 3, the next one at 3 comma minus 4, the next one at 4 comma 3, and the last one located at 5 comma 4. And what we can do with MATLAB is we can change the set of uh, coordinates by introducing an X parameter, or another parameter rather. I'm going to create a, a new variable called X, which is going to be uh, a set of numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And when I plot X against Y, what I'm doing is I'm creating or plotting a set of data points and the first data point will be located at 0, 2. The next data point will be located at 1, 3 and the next one at 2, minus 4 and so on. So when I hit return you'll see that plot the figure. And there we go. We can see that the coordinates have changed. This is now 0, 2 which is connected to the data point located at 1, 3, which is connected to the next data point at 2, minus 4. Um, now, of course, I can create my x variable uh, like this instead. So that goes from 0 up to 4. And that will give me the same sequence of numbers from 0 to 4. And I hope you can appreciate that this is very similar to what we've done up here. I've created a, set, a new set of coordinate values effectively by introducing this frequency axis bins, fax bins variable, which goes from 0 up to n minus 1, where n is the length of the signal, which is equal to the number of values returned by the FFT. Now, bringing this on a little bit further, um, instead of just using whole numbers, I could create a new vector x, which is equal to uh, 0 to 4. Um, and divide that by 10, okay, which gives me this set of values 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4. Now, when I plot x, comma y, all I'm doing is I'm plotting these coordinates. So I have a 0, comma 2, point 0.1, comma 3. The next coordinate or the next data point is located at 0 0.2 comma minus 4 and 0 0.3 comma 3. Now you can see that all of the plots that I've done for y, the shape has looked very similar. All I'm doing is changing this axis here. And that's effectively all I'm doing when I plot the frequency content of a signal against a different frequency axis. So let's just um, clear the screen there and what we'll do now is let's run through um, 
creating a different frequency axis other than frequency bends. So um, just to remind you, uh, we created this frequency axis and we plotted the frequency axis uh, against the absolute FFT of the signal um, to give you this plot. And what we have is the frequency axis shown in bins and what I'd like to do is go back into MATLAB and we change the frequency axis uh, from being displayed in bins to frequency in hertz. Now in order to do that you need to understand or at least know this formula so the frequency of a bin F bin in hertz is going to be equal to the bin number bin num uh, multiply by fs and divided by n. Now that's a formula that you can just accept or uh, you might fully understand it if you understand how the DFT works. Um, but what I'm going to do is use that formula to create an entire frequency axis which I'm going to label as fax hz for hertz. I'm going to set that equal to fax bins which is going to be multiplied by fs and divided by n. Okay. Now, if I take a look at fax bins, uh, say the first five values, they should be numbers from 0 to 4, which we can see there. But fax in hertz for the same range so should be a sequence of numbers uh, from 0 uh, up to whatever value. Uh, but each of those values is separated by fs divided by n which is uh, fs divided by n, in this case is 0 0.11, or sorry, 0 0.1221. So now when I plot fax hertz against my FFT of my signal, I see that I have the frequency shown in hertz rather than in terms of bin number. And we know, th know that the uh, sampling frequency was 62, so we can see this halfway point is around 30 hertz, which represents the, um, the po positive frequencies uh, of the f associated with the frequency spectrum. Now, those couple of examples are really key to understanding all of these examples that I have in this script. And really there's no point going through all of these examples. I think if you understand what I've gone through there, you can read through this code yourself. And if you have any problems, you can always post a comment up onto the YouTube site. Okay, thanks for your attention.